In this video, we're going to talk about the settings in the GS application. We'll start by opening a project. To get you familiar with the layout of the screen, it's important to remember the two finger swipe from top to bottom. We'll rotate the view. Here's free path, the line scan or B scan, and the migrated plus Hilbert view. We can also slide over the A scan. Jumping into the settings pane on the top right corner of the three dot menu, we have measuring presets, image processing, display, and preferences. The presets are what you have to select before you begin collecting data. In measuring mode, you have between line scan, area scan, and free path. I highly recommend free path as you get area scan results and a line scan collection style. Following that, we have the optimization mode. Here you're presented with standard, max speed, and max depth. Standard is gonna be used in most instances, while max speed will be used if you mount the GS to a golf cart or ATV. It's important to note that max depth will turn off the high frequency antenna, so you will not be able to use the slider to go between the high frequency and the low frequency, as max depth will all be low frequency from 40 megahertz up to 1000 megahertz. The repetition rate is your scans per inch. Here we have it set to two scans per inch. Our units are imperial. Of course, you have metric to choose from as well. The measuring presets must be selected before collection begins. The remaining settings through image processing through preferences can be changed in real time or after the fact. In image processing, we have auto gain. If I go over to a B scan and turn off the auto gain, we can adjust the linear gain in the high frequency for the near field image or the low frequency in the full depth image. We can also do time gain compensation, which will gain kind of deeper to more shallow. And we can do that in the HF and LF as well. I'll turn the auto gain back on because this function works incredibly well and is very useful. There's nothing at this time in the near field image that we can do other than select the gains which are present on the main settings display anyway. In full depth image, however, we can frequency filter the LF antenna between 40 and 1000 megahertz. It's currently set in the low pass filter setting, so if I turn that on, it's not gonna really change anything. That really brings the uh, high cut down from 1000 to 800 megahertz, and the time window can be adjusted by using the slider or any place in the GS application. You see a dialog box to the right, you can tap in the box and input numerical values that way. Backing out to the main settings page, we're gonna look at 3D tomography. Currently, it's recommended to leave the smoothing turned off and the scan width is for the free path image. So as I swipe through and make the, the scans much thinner, you can see that here and I can make them very thick and then I can bring them down to a more reasonable level. If you wanna fill in the gaps without over, um, kind of making an over course, calculation there you can bring that down to something like this noise cancellation here this is going to re remove potential uh, interference so there may be a little in this data set we can turn it off and see if the data rewrites and see if we've gotten rid of any EM noise in this particular example I don't see much we can maybe turn that back on see if there's any changes a little bit right over here to the right of the screen Background removal can is utilized in depth or in time. So it starts at zero nanoseconds and can be scrubbed down to really whatever increment you'd like within the time window. Um, here again, you can tap on the dialog box and input values numerically. Really, I usually just use this to get rid of the direct wave and the ground wave. And if you wanna kind of fine tune this setting, you can turn the vertical scale uh, to nanoseconds uh, zoom into the project. All right, and now we can see if we set it to about uh, two nanoseconds, we should have a decent value. Good enough. We'll go three just in case. Hit OK. And this should get rid of most of the direct wave and ground wave that we see at the top of the scan. Multi layers of, uh, excuse me, I skipped dielectric constant. Um, let's kind of zoom back out a little bit here. We'll pull up the, the low frequency. Maybe, there we go, kind of zoom out. 
get a hyperbola on the screen. Here we go. Let's go back to depth. We can set our cursor, tap dielectric. We can move the yellow silhouette onto the hyperbola. And then we want to either tap into the dialog box or use the slider to set the dielectric. So I just changed it from 10 to 15. This should make the yellow silhouette a little bit more narrow. And we see here, this is a much better fit. We probably still have a little bit of work to do, but for this video, I'll just leave that alone for now. Multi-layer is a feature that is, is not really recommended during data collection, but after you've collected your data, if you have super strong soil stratification, or say like a thickened concrete section over dirt, you may consider using uh, the multi-layer setting as it will provide will allow you to have more than one dielectric. So you can have a dielectric in the top section of one value and another value in the lower section. Again, I would do this after collection and not during collection. I'll turn this back off for now. A scan, we have the option to select between uh, signal, envelope, or both. So here we have the signal, here's the envelope, and here's both, I usually leave on both. Um, but this is some personal preference here. So remember, image processing can be changed during collection or after collection. You're not married to these settings. So it's kind of important, maybe you make sure auto gain is on while you collect, and the rest of it can be dealt with uh, during collection or afterwards. Opening up the display section, we have the different color palettes. We see here, uh, there's spectrum, red, white, and blue, a warmer, a cooler, white on the left, black on the right, and then black on the left, white on the right. Here it's personal preference. I'm black on the left, white on the right, so I tend to use this one all the time. We have the contrast slider. This is not gain, this is just contrast. This is a bit of personal preference here, so kind of set it to what you like or what's comfortable for your eyes and kind of go with that. The one-to-one -one aspect ratio just stretches everything out in a one-to-one aspect ratio, I guess, um, but that could be toggled off. I personally like my data a little more squished in. I like to see more distance along any one line. And this this is just, again, personal preference, but how I like to use um, uh, the application here. Marker lines can be turned off. So if I place a, a marker in here and I, you can see that vertical line that goes below the data set, I can turn that off. I can turn the grid lines on and off. And then if I want to make a note with, with Apple Pencil, I can scribble a note on here, you know, and hit done. And if I need this image or want to use it later, I can toggle off all annotations throughout the entire scan um, just by toggling that feature there. Okay, and preferences, so that was uh, object library and mobile data saving. Let's start with mobile data saving. Turn this on if you do not want your files to upload over cellular network. Okay, so you're trying to preserve cellular data. You're only going to upload when you get uh, back on a Wi-Fi network. You know, it's recommended that you use an iPad with cellular. Um, so I would probably leave this off um, and let the project start backing up as soon as they can. The object library, let's begin by long pressing in a data set and putting a tag on one of our hyperbolas here. And you see the list of utilities that we have. If we scroll down, we can see some other things, pull boxes, valve boxes, trenches, USTs. It's an editable list and you edit that list in object library. You can do this for your utilities. You can do this for structural elements as well. Just tap on the pencil and create a new one. Uh, you have the terrain, I have soil layers one and two, and points of interest. Points of interest are very interesting because you can uh, select these during the free path uh, collection on the, the map image screen. There is a star icon that you can press, and here you can survey in paint marks from your EM locate, valve boxes, manholes, literally anything at the surface. You could walk over to a pedestal or a transformer and uh, survey those in as well. You just have to come in here and uh, create these. Okay, so pretty simple to do. Moving on through the settings, we're gonna go to interpretation. So here I can turn off all my tags and lines, and then I can do this independently. So let's say I want all tags off, but I want my lines on, or I want all my lines on and all my tags off. This will make more sense. If I thicken this out a little bit, you'll see some more tags. 
So now we're looking at kind of a, a 12 foot uh, range here. So there's most of the tags and you can come in here and hide things one at a time or group them together. It's a nice feature. Uh, this is the interpretation section. The logbook is going to be a, an accounting of everything you do with the project. Uh, hardware, software information, a geotag from the iPad, kind of address level will be appended to the logbook. It'll start show you the start and stop times of your measurement and any changes that you make to the data set will be automatically recorded in here. So if you put a tag in the data set that gets recorded, if you delete that tag, that'll also be recorded. If I scrub down to the very bottom, you'll see I just deleted a tag. Any lines you put in here, markers, text, comments, anything you add to the project will be recorded here in the logbook. You can use the camera to take photos or choose photos from your library. You can add a 15 second recording with the microphone and you can insert comments into the logbook. Talk to text here is really great. Um, it's super fast, it's convenient. If the thought pops into your head, open the logbook, put the detail in there. And I also want to show you too, that if I place a tag, I'm sure I have them all turned off. We'll place a new tag. If I put a tag in here, let's say it's electric, I hit save. If I tap on that tag, I can also uh, add comments to that as well. I could set the size if I know it, and I could set the depth and give it a ground truth. If we can open up the earth, view this utility, I could set the depth. The tag is carrying over its easting and northing information. This will be with respect to the coordinate system that you set up uh, before data collection. We'll go over this again in greater detail in another video. You can even change the tag. Say you thought it was electric, but it turns out to be a telecom line. You can change that here and this will be recorded in the logbook. That's it for settings. Briefly, let's go through some of the buttons that are on the screen during collection. Starting at the bottom, you do have the pencil, right? So you can use Apple Pencil or in settings, you can set it up to where you can use your finger. You have a shortcut to the microphone. You place the cursor in the data set and hit the rectangle with the line. That's a mark. So you can put marks in the data or the focus. So you can hit this and really focus down on one layer if this is what you're interested in. You could do that. Um, the trash can obviously is going to delete the, the project and the share button. So quickly going through the exports. Export a snapshot will grab a screen, a screen grab of what you're currently looking at and immediately open the share sheet so that you can text, email, or use any other application that you may have on iPad to send that image to somebody else. Save a snapshot will send the snapshot to the logbook. Export as SegY will export the raw GPR data and GPS information so that you can use that in post-processing software. Export as DXF will take all your points and all your lines that you, here we see in the map view and export a CAD file in the coordinate system that we set up to begin with. Similarly, it'll do that for KML, which is Google Earth, Shapefile, which is geographic information systems, such as Esri, ArcGIS, or QGIS. Export as HTML is the reporting feature. It kind of chronicles all the settings that you have, any screen grabs, all your tags with easting and northing, and then a one-to-one -one, uh, copy of the logbook is in there. So it's a great reporting feature to say, hey, this is where I was, this is what I did, and this is how I did it. And share via URL allows you to share this project from one iPad to another iPad. If uh, you have another user, whether they're a colleague, coworker, or client, you can hit share via URL and send them the link. When they click on it with their iPad and they have the GS application installed, they can download that project to their iPad. Please remember the GS app is free on the Apple App Store. If I zoom in or zoom out, I can hit the button in the bottom corner to kind of recenter the free path. Again, in the middle, we have the slider. So as I slice down through the image, we can see our lines and tags and any of the 3D tomography that's picking up some of the utilities in the underground. Here we can see some kind of coming through. And on the left, we have a B scan. I'll quickly come into the settings and go to display and turn on the measured path. So here we can see the, the path that was walked during data collection, excuse me. We'll bring this over and let's look at the very first line. So we, we collected a line, hit pause and move over and did another line. So now I'm looking at just the first path. If I close the settings menu on the left, we see that scan. Now it's 84 
feet uh, squished into about three inches. So if you two finger swipe on the screen, it'll take you exactly to that place. So here's all 84 feet in one B scan right on the screen. You can see lots of hyperbolas here, lots of utilities, lots of work to be done. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you in another video.